Hello, this is Little Green Ghouls and welcome back to Goosebumps Revisited, a series where I break down a classic Goosebumps book and any episode that goes along with it. I will also be totaling up some of our Goosebumps cliches and classic moments. This week I'm excited to visit The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. I was looking forward to this book because the camp books have yet to disappoint, and this one is no exception. I did think it was the weakest of the camp books, but still a good time. I was worried it was going to be a predictable plot twist based off the blurb on the back, but it left me decently surprised. I recommend checking it out if you haven't yet. This 1997 cover is among my favorites. I've read that the Goosebumps skeletons have their eyeballs because Scholastic thought they looked too creepy otherwise, but I think it has the opposite effect. These skeletons are even more unsettling with their big ol' eyes. I think this is a pretty universally loved cover, and I know for sure that I've seen a couple of tattoos on Reddit even. I also really like the 2005 slime border. If you've been following these videos, you probably already know why. It's bright pink, and I think the teal lettering goes great with the cover art. This book was featured on a training card book tear out, and I found some merchandise this week. Even though I don't think it's from the 90s, I was just happy to see some new stuff. We have this cool enamel pin of Della. The book was featured in this button set with some other classic covers, and this hat features the cover art, which is pretty awesome. In the back of the book, it looks like it finally occurred to Scholastic that they could condense their advertisements with this page promoting three upcoming books. My Best Friend is Invisible, Escape from Camp Run for Your Life, and You Can't Scare Me, the TV book. Our front tag says, Last one in is a rotten ghost, which is a play on the phrase, Last one in is a rotten egg, which is something I definitely remember saying some variation of as a kid. Our back tag says, Sink or sink, which is another play on words with the phrase, Sink or swim, but let's check out the blurb on the back. Camp is supposed to be fun, but Sarah hates Camp Cold Lake. The lake is gross and slimy, and she's having a little trouble with her bunkmates. They hate her. So Sarah comes up with a plan. She'll pretend to drown, then everyone will feel sorry for her. But things don't go exactly the way Sarah planned, because down by the cold, dark lake, someone is watching her, stalking her, someone with pale blue eyes, and a see-through body. Okay, let's start this summary. The book opens with our introduction to Sarah, and she hates water sports camp. This is very early in the summary to go off topic, but my first time at a gay bar with a fake ID at the ripe age of 19, a man asked if I was into water sports, and that's when I learned there's more than one definition to that phrase. And no, I like Sarah am not into water sports of any variety. Sarah is at Camp Cold Lake with her brother Aaron, and he loves water sports. Sarah just can't get into the general sliminess of it all, and much prefers a nice clean pool to a dark scummy lake. Aaron is a Labrador of a person and loves everything and everyone, Sarah is a bit more reserved and not into the camp scene at all. She misses the luxuries of home, like shopping malls. She's also tall and gangly so she sticks out a bit, to the point her dad even calls her Grasshopper. I feel like another Goosebumps kid was called Grasshopper. After an uneventful bus ride, Sarah sees her cabin and does not make a great first impression as she immediately shouts, oh no, no way, which her three bunkmates take personally. Sarah is distraught because her bed is right next to the cabin window, which doesn't have a screen so she's rightfully concerned about a potential mosquito situation. A camp counselor named Richard appears and Sarah bursts right into her demands for a new bed placement. This leads to her switching places with a girl named Brianna, who is not pleased about this. Sarah's three bunkmates think she's kind of a whiny brat now and they're not off to a good start. We meet Jan and Meg, the other two bunkmates, and they're really confused on when Sarah is at a water sports camp if she hates water sports. Sarah doesn't want to say her parents forced her, so she just kind of skirts the question by saying she likes other things. Stein has a men riding women moment where he has these girls suddenly insulting each other's weight out of the blue. Brianna compliments Meg's swimsuit, and Meg immediately replies, like it would really fit you. It keeps going though because later on Brianna asks Meg, did you lose weight over the winter? Camp Cold Lake sounds like a good place to develop body dysmorphia so far. Sarah goes to put her backpack on her bed, when Jan snaps at her to put it down it's hers, but Sarah is insistent that it's her backpack. This results in the backpack spilling all over the floor, and surprise, it wasn't Sarah's backpack, so she stepped in it again. Among the contents of the backpack are an asthma inhaler, which causes Sarah to cry out, asthma medication? Like it's some sort of shocking revelation? Jan takes this very personally and says, thanks for letting the whole world know I have asthma. Why don't you stand up at the campfire tonight and announce it to the whole camp? I didn't realize asthma was such a serious, shameful business. The chapter ends with Sarah acknowledging that it's only been an hour, and it's pretty much confirmed that these three girls hate her, and it's gonna be a long summer. We jump to campfire that night, and Sarah is creeping herself out, thinking of all the mysterious creatures that be lurking in the woods. Meg and Brianna suddenly appear, and tell Sarah to run, because some boys put fireworks in the fire, so Sarah takes off running full speed. This of course just ends up being a prank and the entire camp laughs at her. Sarah doesn't think this is funny and has to force back tears. Her brother Aaron appears and tells her to learn how to take a joke, but that goes against Sarah's nature. The camp counselors, Richard and Liz, are going over the camp rules, which Sarah is not really listening to. 
until she hears that she's been given a list of 20 water rules that she'll have to know, which she thinks is a bit excessive. The most important rule seems to be the buddy system, where no one can enter the lake without a buddy, which doesn't bode well for buddyless Sarah. The fire burns down and they sing some camp songs and continue going over the rules. Meg and Brianna reappear and let Sarah know they got off to a bad start and want a fresh start. This briefly fills Sarah with hope, but really, Meg and Brianna were just using the moment to stick a live snake down the back of her shirt. Sarah checks the snake into the woods and gets ready to kick some ass before a sensible Aaron returns. He points out that the entire camp has watched her freak out twice tonight, and she's not coming off great. But Sarah doesn't care and storms off to the cabin. She manages to get herself lost on this short walk, and then we have an abrupt and silly chapter cliffhanger where she thinks she stepped in quicksand. However, on the next page, the first thing she says is, no, no quicksand. There's no such thing as quicksand. Don't tell Mark and how I got my shrunken head. This just ends up being really thick mud that is apparently home to a specific breed of mud spider because dozens of large spiders emerge from the mud and crawl over Sarah's shoes. I guess Stein had to add something to make stepping in the mud scary. Sarah then has a great idea for revenge and scoops the spiders into the back of her flashlight and returns to the cabin to dump the spiders in Meg and Brianna's bed. She nearly gets away with it, but Jan walks in as she's tidying up the beds and looks at Sarah suspiciously. Sarah changes the subject and then crawls into bed happily waiting for her revenge. It doesn't take long before both Meg and Brianna are screaming and the spiders actually bite both of the girls. Sarah's joy comes to a quick end though because Jan immediately rats Sarah out for the spider prank. So now all of these girls are full blown enemies. The next morning, Sarah signs up for canoeing but doesn't have a buddy. She asks Jan, who is like, fuck no spider girl. But Sarah winds to counselor Liz and then Liz forces Jan to be Sarah's buddy. Sarah really is that kid in this book. It's kinda easy to get why the other kids don't like her. Once out in the middle of the lake, Sarah starts to get nervous because she's not a strong swimmer and the shore is pretty far away. Suddenly, Jan stands up and starts rocking the boat while staring Sarah down. Sarah begs her to stop, but Jan is out for revenge over the asthma situation. She even says, they won't let me go on the six day canoe trip, supposedly because she has asthma. This seems more like an issue with the camp than Sarah, but Jan doesn't care and launches Sarah into the water. Sarah struggles to swim for a bit before clinging to the side of the canoe. Jan is nowhere to be found because she swam off to shore leaving Sarah to float alone. Eventually, Counselor Liz paddles out to rescue Sarah, but to Sarah's surprise, Liz gives her an ass chewing about purposely tipping over the canoe because it turns out Jan told a big ol' fat lie about the situation. Sarah is further humiliated as the entire camp watches her be hauled back to shore, then they all have to have a special second water safety meeting because of her. After the meeting, Sarah pulls Aaron aside and lets him know that she's gonna run away from camp. There's no phones at Camp Cold Lake, so she's gonna cut through the woods until she reaches town and will call her parents to retrieve her. Aaron tries to calm her down, which only irritates Sarah more, and she ends up shoving him into the mud, so now her brother is officially over her ass too. The next chapter, for reasons unexplained, Sarah's plan to run away is out, and her new plan is to fake her own drowning. Sarah's convinced almost drowning will make everybody feel bad for her and they'll want to be her friend. Someone needs to let Sarah know that pity is cheap and people who thrive off of it are unpleasant. At free swim time, Sarah puts her plan into action and swims down to the bottom of the lake. She lets us know that she has really strong lungs because she plays the flute and can hold her breath for 2-3 to three minutes. I played the saxophone and I can't hold my breath for shit. Sarah is disappointed that no one seems to notice she's drowning and then Stein gives a good description of her potentially drowning. My chest is ready to explode. My whole body is tingling, burning. My head feels ready to pop open. Can't anyone see me here? A wave of dizziness swept over me. I shut my eyes, but the dizziness wouldn't go away. I pushed out the rest of the air in my lungs. No air, I thought. No air left. My arms ached and my legs ached. My chest burned. With my eyes closed, I saw bright yellow spots. Dancing yellow lights. They grew brighter. Brighter. They did a fast, furious dance all around me. Around my burning, tingling body. My chest. Exploding. I'm so cold, I realized. Suddenly, I feel so cold. The dancing, darting yellow lights grew brighter. Brightest spotlights. Brightest flash bulbs. Flashing in my eyes. Flashing around my still, cold body. I shuddered from the cold. Shuddered again. Cold, thick water filled my mouth. I've stayed under too long, I realized. No one is coming. No one is coming to save me. I struggled to see, but the lights were too bright. Can't see. I swallowed another mouthful of water. Can't see. Can't breathe. We then have a fairly unsettling chapter as Sarah emerges from the lake, but now it's dark and abandoned. She wanders around and realizes all the leaves have fallen from the trees and it's even beginning to snow. She runs around the abandoned camp screaming for help and feeling numb all over, so it's looking like this girl is clearly dead. She finally hears the sound of a girl singing and decides to follow after it. She finds the girl outside a lodge singing the camp song. The girl is extremely pale with curly blonde hair and bright blue eyes. She introduces herself as Della. She tells Sarah that she's been waiting for her because she can't leave without a buddy. Sarah quickly deduces this girl is a ghost, 
which means she's a ghost too. But Sarah isn't ready to go anywhere just yet. She races away from Della back to the lake shore, where she sinks into the mud and her chest feels like it's gonna burst. These past three chapters have been well executed. I like the creepy dreamlike quality it has, and Della needing a dead buddy is a great touch. I think I already shared this in another video, how I almost drowned as a kid, and I thought the description was pretty good. If I didn't share it, long story short, I learned there is a significant difference between 3 feet and 3 meters at a wave pool in Canada as a kid. Sarah is now staring intensely into a light, when it becomes clear she's staring at the sun and is back on the other side. It seems like Liz has been doing some CPR and all the campers are gathered around watching her trying to save Sarah's life, so it looks like Sarah's plan went even better than she expected it to. Sarah hugs Liz for saving her life and hugs her brother too. She then surprises Meg and Brianna by giving them both big ol' hugs, because Sarah is just happy to be alive and free of the ghost realm. Jen then clocks her immediately by muttering Sarah did it all for attention, so everyone would have to be nice to her. I mean, Jen's not wrong here. Sarah doesn't care though because she's been given a second chance on life and is going to enjoy it to the fullest. That night, they're having a large camp meeting. I imagine to review the water safety rules for the third time, when Sarah is startled to see Ghost Della sitting at the edge of a log and offering to be her camp buddy, Sarah can see dead people now. Sarah makes a scene for like the fifth time in this book and starts screaming and pointing at Della. Liz and Richard get Sarah calmed down by force feeding her some hot dogs. She then spends the rest of the meeting ignoring the water rules and scanning the crowd for Della. After the meeting, Aaron corners her and wants to know if she really saw a ghost, and then dismisses her when she says she did. She then lets him know that she's going back to her original plan of running away to town, but Aaron begs her not to because then he'll have to leave too. Once back in her cabin, Sarah is suddenly circled by Meg, Brianna, and Jan in a chapter cliffhanger, and it looks like she's about to get jumped. But it turns out these girls really do want a fresh start this time, and then they spend the rest of the night painting their fingernails purple together. I wonder what caused Jan's change of heart. Before she drifts off to sleep, she hears somebody whispering her name from across the cabin. She sits there frozen when suddenly an icy hand is on her shoulder in a chapter cliffhanger. She opens her eyes and is face to face with Brianna, who said she was moaning in her sleep and decided to wake her up. Sarah is not convinced it was only a dream though. The next day, they have a half lake swim, and Sarah decides to face her fears and get back in the water. Jan offers to be her swim buddy, and the two begin their swim across the lake. They're only supposed to swim to Liz's boat and then go back, but for some reason Jan swims quickly past it. This results in Sarah swimming after her trying to get her to turn back, but when Jan turns around, surprise, it's Della, and she wants to be swim buddies in a chapter cliffhanger. Della snatches Sarah's arm and tries to yank her under the water, but Sarah is able to break free and swims frantically back to Liz's boat. She tries to crawl for help, but she can barely get her words out. Once she reaches the boat, she's pulled in, not by Liz, but by Della. Just kidding, Sarah's just seen shit at this point, and it is Liz who pulled her from the water. Liz is probably like 16 and thinking, I don't get paid enough for this shit. Liz boats Sarah back to shore and takes her to Richard's office. He thinks Sarah maybe got into the water a little too early after her near drowning experience, but he's caught off guard when she wants to know if a girl's ever drowned at Camp Cold Lake. Richard insists that no one has ever drowned, but Sarah can sense he's lying. She then turns around and spots Adela in the doorway and demands to know if Richard can see her too. At first he's like, yeah, of course I can see her, but he's only trying to placate Sarah and he actually doesn't see anything. Della stands in the doorway, sticking her tongue out at Sarah and mimicking Richard as he talks. Della then follows Sarah out the door saying more ghost buddy nonsense until Sarah snaps and shouts for her to shut up and leave me alone, only to turn around to see Brianna standing there hurt and confused. She tries to point at Della and explain that she was talking to her, but Brianna just gives her a suspiciously odd look. I do love that Della is just full on following Sarah around everywhere now, like a ghost pest. The next morning, Sarah decides she's gonna go water skiing with everybody else. Stein is fully aware it's completely stupid and illogical that Sarah would get back in the water, so he just has her ramble through various excuses why she's going swimming, while simultaneously acknowledging it's really dumb. When it's Sarah's turn to water ski, everything is going fine at first, and she's surprised to find that she's actually pretty good at it, but when the driver turns around to look at Sarah, it's none other than Della. At this point, Sarah should just expect this, I know I do. Della is rocketing Sarah to the center of the lake, so Sarah lets go and is like, ha ha ha, you didn't get me this time, Della. Only to have Della turn the boat around and come flying full speed right at her, so Sarah thinks she's about to get smashed by a boat. She tries to dive under the water, but the life vest stops her. She has no time to escape, and the chapter ends with, the front of the boat bounced over me. Then, the whirling motor blades sliced off my head. This is a fake out, but a good one, because we're close enough to the end here, I was half expecting her to die. She ends up surviving the boat attack because it just slices her life jacket in half. I'm not sure it works that way, but moving on. She's able to swim to shore, where she races straight past Liz and right to her cabin because she plans on running away for real now. She throws on some clothes in her cabin and takes off for the woods. She runs into Brianna, who just tells her good luck, which is again some suspicious behavior. 
Sarah races through the woods until she comes across Della, who's hanging out in a tree like all playful ghosts do. Sarah tells Della that her plan failed and she's never getting back in that lake again, because she's not gonna drown like her. Della just laughs and is like, I didn't drown. I ran off into the woods and got bitten by a snake. So I purposely made you afraid of the lake so you'd end up in the woods with me where you can get bitten by a snake too and be my buddy. It's a bit convoluted, but we're going with it. Sarah then ends the chapter with a big black snake curled around her leg. However, Brianna suddenly appears and tells Della to piss off because Sarah is her buddy. Brianna lets Sarah know that Della tormented her all last year and she knew she had to return to protect the next girl. Della is like, no, I've been vanquished and falls out of the tree and just disappears. It's a little anticlimactic. It is the last page though, so we need our final twist. It turns out Della actually killed Brianna last year, but Brianna didn't want to be her buddy, even in death. However, she wants Sarah to be her buddy. So the book ends with Brianna holding up a poisonous snake, and it looks like Sarah's gonna be somebody's buddy after all. There was no episode pairing this week, even though I would have loved to see some cheesy 90s Della special effects. So instead of going to Dreamcatcher, this is a camp themed episode from R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour that was first recommended me back during Ghost Camp by Spongy in the comments. I have to say, if I had seen this as a kid, it would have creeped me out. So let's get into the episode. Well, that didn't go as planned. Maybe if we ditch the new losers. Actually, I want to get to know the new campers. They seem nice. FYI, this is a little foreshadowing. Oh, wait for me. <laughs> okay, everybody. This girl is a little shit stirrer. Don't get fooled by her little Miss Sunshine act. Amelia's a total jerk once you get to know her. More foreshadowing. We make beef. They kind of look like spider webs. They're dream catchers. This shit stirrer is back at it. You know, there's a camp legend about dream catchers. One of the campers die in her sleep. Some kind of boogeyman that she called the dream catcher. She started seeing things that were so awful. Dead. Ah! <laughs> Don't fall asleep. Sweet dream. This episode actually has no problem trying to be scary. Bad dream. She got Freddy Krueger. This setup is all very Nightmare on Elm Street, actually. Same thing happened in my nightmare. There was this evil spider guy. I'm too afraid to sleep. I know, me too. This song is bizarre when you really think about it, but also more foreshadowing. There was an old lady who swallowed a spider. Jump scare. That's nasty. Girl is pulling chunks of spiderwebs from her mouth. Go get help. Okay. Lisa. <laughs> An asshole victim is a guarantee in this one. Flashing bathroom lights are never a good sign. Another jump scare. This had to scare the shit out of some kids when it aired. So now this girl's looking for her friend in what is clearly a spider's nest. Amelia, where are you? Someone help me! This dreamcatcher guy is legit creepy. This demonic ass girl just doesn't quit. I can't, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't move. I can't. What are you doing? I'm an only child. I don't like sharing. Well, sometimes less is more. <laughs> Asshole victim prophecy complete. No! No! Away! Away! 
you were awake, I would be here. Overall, I thought The Curse of Camp Cold Lake maintains Stein's camp book streak, but isn't nearly as solid as the other books. I really enjoyed that Sarah isn't a Mary Sue, and you can kind of see how she's her own worst enemy at times. I thought the drowning scene was really well done, and those three chapters with Sarah on the other side in the ghost world were effectively creepy. I also love that Stein went all out and had this girl get run down by her frickin' boat. I was less impressed with the ending and thought we could add more clues around Brianna established at the start of the book, and I'm assuming I missed something because wouldn't Meg remember Brianna straight up dying at the camp last year if they were previous bunkmates? I'm gonna give this one 4 to 5 life jackets. It was really close to being a 5 star book, but I think it just needed a little bit more work around the twist and a better climax with Della. Okay, on to our totals. The Curse of Camp Cold Lake didn't have any vomit, asshole victims, or shoulder scares, but it did have a little of everything else. In Getting Jiggy with the 90s, we had one 90s moment. This was Sarah's love for all things shopping mall. This raises our goosebumps total to 171 Jiggy 90s moments. Shoulder Scare makes its return from a very long hiatus, which I think just shows how Stein really outgrew some of his own writing cliches. Our Shoulder Scare was a Della Shoulder Scare dream mashup that raises our series total to 21 Shoulder Scares. There were three pranks in The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. The first was with the fireworks in the fire, a snake in the shirt, and a spider in the bedsheet prank. This raises our group from series total to 126 pranks. It's Only a Dream also makes a return with a Della Nightmare that may not have actually been a nightmare. This raises our series total to 15 It's Only a Dreams. The Curse of Camp Cold Lake was a bit heavier in chapter cliffhangers compared to recent books with a total of 16 chapter cliffhangers. This raises our Goosebumps series total to 691. The Clunky Award this week has to go to chapter 7 to 8 where Sarah thinks she's falling into quicksand but goes on to immediately in the next sentence declare that quicksand doesn't even exist. Shocker ending. Our big twist for this book was a little clunky with the reveal that Brianna actually died last year at camp and she's also looking for a ghost buddy. This raises our Goosebumps series total to 47. Well that's it for The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. I thought this one was pretty decent even if the ending didn't quite do it for me. Next week is My Best Friend is Invisible, where all I can remember about this one is an image from the episode that creeped me out as a kid. Let me know in the comments what you thought of The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. Where did this fit in your camp rankings? What kind of name is Della? Are you into water sports? Also, what did you think of my camp horror clips this week? Having all these camp books has really made it possible to dive into the Friday the 13th franchise throughout this little series. Anyways, as always, thanks again for watching and make sure you subscribe for... The Brad. The Love.